the Mountain West, likely to drop divisions by 2025, uh, and this is per da, 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 Brett McMurphy. I've got the article pulled up here. Uh, it said the Mountain West is going or is giving strong consideration to eliminating divisions for the 2023 college football season. Sources told Action Network. Uh, one source was much more optimistic, indicating it is likely to happen next year. Uh, said we've been talking about it and will continue. At, the NCAA Council this month is expected to approve a waiver allowing all leagues to play without divisions but still hold conference championship games. Uh, it will not require teams to eliminate divisions, but it does provide that option. I will imagine we will see more of this. Um, basically, a conference is guaranteed its two best teams in the championship game if it eliminates the divisions. Now, that way they would be better positioned for uh, a CFP berth, or a New Year's Six birth, or whatever, right? I don't know of many conferences that are going to keep divisions once this waiver uh, gets approved, right? Once once they allow this, I think we the, the divisions might be the way of the dodo. Like, because you're always going to want your best options in there, and it would eliminate the threat of possibly having, like, you remember back in early 2000s, somewhere around there, Brett Bielema, took a 7-5 and five Wisconsin team to the Rose Bowl. Like, I, I don't... Uh, yeah. We're not going to see that anymore because it's it will not be possible. So, I'm I'm curious, uh, you know, you think it's a good idea? Have we... I don't know that we've really talked a lot about this. I know we've brought it up before, but I don't well, know your opinion. I think this is okay. Not... not so, so, for... You, you got to think about this. This is for the lesser conferences, quote-unquote. All right? This is for those that they call... that they refer to as the G5 even though many years the, the best of those groups are better than two or three of the Power Five conferences. Um, I think they need to make sure that their championship game is the two best teams because that would give – that's just going to have more cachet. It's going to have them more bump. So if you have divisions and, and you have two teams that are undefeated on one side of the bracket – and they play each other, and they one one of them finishes with one loss, and they're both ranked, okay? And and your opponent on the other side in your conference championship game is a four-loss school or a three-loss school or whatever they are. That doesn't do anything for you. But if you let those two teams play again for the title, now you've got another big game. You have another ranked game to, to, to help you in the rankings to get you into a bigger bowl, to maybe get you into the conversation of the playoff. Um, and I think that's what's important. Well, it's a perfect example of this, the 2020 season, uh, Alabama and Texas A&M, right? A&M only had the one loss to Bama. Uh, I think they went 9-1 and one that last season. And Florida had two losses out of the East. Now, A&M would have been the contender here, the the other championship game participant, if they had allowed this to go through at that point. So then you would not have had Alabama playing against Dan Mullen and Kyle Pitts and uh, all that kind of mess. You would have had Alabama against Jimbo Fisher in that bunch again, and it would have given Texas A&M a shot to get into the college football playoff at that point. Uh, That's right. So I, I would imagine that they will start looking at this. The SEC especially will will do away with this because they're going to have 16 teams. Like it, you, Your entire conference schedule, if you do two divisions, is going to be uh, only against the teams that are in your side. So you're going to have to do something to switch it up, right? And so I'm, I'm curious about it. I'm, I want to see how it works. I want to see what ends up going on. Obviously, it will eliminate a lot of people early from getting into a championship game, and that part might hurt the regular season a little bit because you you won't have that 7-5 and five Wisconsin team that is playing out the stretch to get to uh, the Big Ten championship game, right? Like, uh, normally, in that situation, you start out the year 3-5 and five or whatever, but then you, you hit on a run, and you're going through your conference slate, and all of a sudden, you've got a shot to get to the Big Ten title game. And, you know, you're a 7-5 and five team, but you made it. Uh, you're not going to have those kind of upsets come in anymore, and that that could hurt. But it will give you some significantly bigger games as we get closer to the playoff and, and the postseason. So 
you know, you got to give a little bit. You got to take a little bit. I hate anything that takes away from the regular season. But, I mean, we've already destroyed the regular season as it is, you know. (laughs) But hang on now. I don't know that these things take away from the regular season, though. Like, I hate that you're one and one against the team. And if you win the second time, you're the champion or you move on or whatever. I hate that. Yeah. But I understand that that's just a part of it. That's the way it is. And I don't know that that means the regular season doesn't mean anything. Because if A&M had lost that game, then they're probably not that next best team. What if what if Florida is better than them now? And they didn't play each other, and we got a two-way tie for that second-place team. Yeah. You know? Yeah, You're going to want to let in the team that didn't already lose to the first-place team. That is true. Yeah, the tiebreakers so, are going to be a little so crazy. I, I don't think – I don't I – don't, Think, I don't think this hurts the regular season. All these things that people say, this has hurt the regular season. No, 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 no. What hurts the regular season, it hurts. It might hurt a game in September. Okay? What kills this sport is if you lose in September. You play one of those big one on one matchups and you lose in September, then your chances of making the playoffs and getting in with four teams it drops considerably. And that kills the sport. It doesn't reward anybody for getting better at all. At all. Yeah. Okay. I think you're on to something here. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. So 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 if you lose two games in, in, in September and October, then then November doesn't matter at all. Now a whole month doesn't matter. Yeah, true. True. So, and that's that's so, all. So, so who says the, the regular season is yeah. important? No, it's important. If Auburn loses two games in September, then what the fuck's the regular season got? The rest of the season's done. And that, so again, prime example: Florida last year, they lost that one game to Alabama, uh, lost a heartbreaker very soon after that, and they basically shut it down for the rest of the year. I mean that that team had did nothing, not try. Had nothing else to play for. Yeah. So, so all those people trying to quote unquote protect the regular season. They just don't understand the mechanics of how the season actually plays out. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can I can get with this. Because it, it doesn't protect. It doesn't at all. It just protects September. That's all it does. That's a good point. That's a good point. All right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.